Okay, I'm wondering if anyone's here. Ah, no, hang on. I was going to wear this, wasn't I? Can someone give me a thumbs up if you can hear me? And if this is working, uh, just anyone. Can someone give me a thumbs up? Thank you. Thank you. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Now, we uh, are going to go live at eight o'clock, which is pretty much now, really. I said, I said eight o'clock, so I'm going to wait until it's exactly eight o'clock so that um, people who are turning up at eight will actually be here on time. So thanks for turning up. I've been noticing that some of you are all hanging out in the chat and it, it looks to me like you've uh, you've all been making friends in the chat, which is nice. And so uh, I'm not going to start till this. This says eight o'clock. Oh, eight o'clock. There we go. So hello, YouTube friends. Uh, I've had a few thumbs up, so I know that this is working. And of course, she's here. I didn't wake her up or anything. She was right here already. And so um, what I said in the comments, whoops a daisy, every time, every time. What I, I did that little video, didn't I? And I said that I would. Uh, so can you just also tell me, is the sound OK? Because I'm doing this on my iPad and I've got my little mic on. So um, Sandra or somebody, so is the sound OK, Sandra? Great. Excellent. Oh, hi, Paloma. Right. Oh, I said I wouldn't do that, didn't I? Now, I put the little video up with the questions. What fantastic questions you all ask me. Absolutely brilliant. And so what I've done this, this afternoon is I've collated the questions here into themes because some of the people ask the same questions. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start right in on answering questions. I'm not even going to look at the chat. I love that you're all there. Thank you very, very much indeed for turning up for this live stream. It's brilliant. I'm doing it on my iPad. I've got my iPad plugged into the main so that the battery's not going to go down, hopefully. And in the olden days, I filmed everything on my iPad and I've got my little uh, mic here. OK, then. So um, she's here. Of course, she's here. I wonder if you'd sit on my knee, please. So the questions are fabulous and I have them all here and I'm, I've got them kind of into themes. So I'm going to start straight away with the first theme, which is all about my house. And people want to know how old my house is and a little bit about my living situation here. So I don't really know, but I think the, the, far, the farm is about 200 years old, I think. Uh, it's, a, it's about that 200, 250 years, something like that. And uh, so this cottage here that I live in used to be two farm workers cottages, two one up, one down, one up, one down with two farm workers living in here. Amazing. And so um, I've been living in this house for 33 years and I rent it. People are oh, now all the cats are in. Sadie's just meowing over there. She'll have to stay in. I'm not getting up and down. So um, the. The house then, I've lived here for 33 years. It, it's gone through several incarnations in that time. And, uh, uh, and I rent the house and someone was asking about the whole renting situation. Before I carry on, though, I'm just going to say thank you to the people who, who are here who have agreed to be moderators. And they are Sandra and Linda and Paloma when she turns up and uh, if she does. And um, that's all. Now, those people don't really know me terribly well, so uh, they only know me through the channel. So they won't be able to answer questions um, uh, about me. So if you've got any questions, just put them in this stream when I'm finished and I'll, uh, I'll be able to answer them then. So the house then, uh, I've, I, lived, I moved here uh, 33 years ago. Two of my kids were born here. The, bo the boys were bo both born here. Amazing. And um, so it's um, it, it's a small cottage on a farm. I don't farm. People are asking me, are they my cows? And do I go out milking in the morning? No, I don't farm. I just rent the cottage on the farm. And um, the 
farm is very high above sea level. We're, you know, 750 feet above sea level. And the animals here are sheep for meat and cows for meat. So there's no dairy here at all. Uh, and I have nothing to do with the farm apart from the fact that I like the people who work on the farm. So no, nothing to do with me, the farm. I just love living here. And I have a big garden, which if you've looked at any of my videos, you'll see that I, it's a bit of a mess. <laughs> a bit of a mess. So somebody asked about the lake and is the lake a lake? No, it's a dam. And uh, oh, thank you, uh, Linda. Yeah, just tell them what they're doing. Tell them what I'm doing. Thank you, Linda. Um, so the dam then was uh, uh, dammed about, I don't know, 150 years ago to provide water power for the lead smelting that was happening in this area then. People are asking about um, the area. What is the population of the little town village where I live? It's not even a village, it's a hamlet. And there are about 100 people on the electoral roll about that. And then someone wanted to know what the what was the population of Hexham. And Hexham's about 12,000 12, people. So that's my nearest town, which is eight miles away. So the questions are going well so far. Somebody wanted to know how I heat the house. And um, so I've written some books about the house and about my life here. And they're all over in the shop there. And this one, I've got them all here. This book here is called The Last Homely House. And in it, there's some uh, an explanation as to how I heat the house. I used to heat the house with that. That's my old Rayburn that died, sadly. And now um, I have a completely different setup, but it's all explained in here about that. Uh, and uh, so now I heat the house with oil. It wouldn't be my choice to heat with oil, to tell you the truth, because it's not very uh, environmentally sound or sustainable. But that's how I heat the house with oil. It's not my house. So uh, I, um, uh, I haven't got a choice about that. Um, OK, somebody here asks about Hadrian's Wall and is it the same as the Scottish border? No, it isn't. Uh, I think Hadrian, when he was conquering um, his empire, the Roman Empire, the furthest reaches of the Roman Empire were, was Hadrian's Wall in, in, uh, you know, in the north of Northumberland. And it goes from Carlisle on one side to uh, Newcastle on the other. But it's nowhere near the Scottish border. It's quite a long way south of the Scottish border. Uh, and so, uh, no, it's not the border at all. Um, now, Natalie, who's moving from Norfolk to uh, North Yorkshire. Good luck with the move, Natalie. And she wanted to know some top tips for visiting Northumberland. And I think there might be somebody else watching who would like who would like to know the answer to that. Now, Northumberland is beautiful beautiful and um <laughs> the best kept secret in the uk i think because when people come to the uk they either motor right on up and go to scotland or if they're this far north they go over to cumbria and the lake district and everyone leaves northumberland alone which is exactly how i would like it to stay but the coast of northumberland is beautiful absolutely beautiful and also there are some fantastic castles. It's very, very, very famous for having loads of castles. And obviously it's very famous for having Norma. I'll tell you what I've done about the cats. Last night, Rocky came in from uh, the feral cat. And so just in case um, he came tonight, I've put some food on the windowsill so that I could chuck it out for him if he comes. Well, Rita's just eaten it all. Cat Rita, never mind. Uh, what uh, what's next? OK, and this is for uh, Angela's husband. The fish in the lake beside me are rainbow trout and no, I don't fish. OK, does that help you there? So, um, Natalie, good luck with the move. That's what I'd say to you there. Jackie wants to see more videos like the Long Meg trip. I went on that trip to Long Meg. I took you all along with me. It was a couple of videos ago. Now, some people, quite a number of people have said that the speeded up part of the journey on that video, they wouldn't have minded at all 
if I'd put it in slow real time. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to post it on the channel in real time with a little bit at the front saying nothing else happens here except an hour in the car because that is an hour of your life you'll never get back again. OK, so if you would like me to do that, I'm going to do that. All right. People are curious about where I was born, um, bits about my family and when I was young. So I was born in Southport, which is in Lancashire. And I'm um, the third of three children, so I'm the youngest. Uh, someone asked how old my dad is, 93 this year. No, 94 this year, It'll be 94 in October. And, um, and about accents. now. Quite a lot of people say that they, you know, that how I speak is, you know, how, w what is my accent? It hasn't, I haven't really got an accent. I've got more of a sort of northern voice, really. And um, I'm from Lancashire and I could speak in a Lancashire accent if, um, if prompted to do so. But I'm not going to. But when I moved up to this part of the world in... Well, when I was 18, I pretty much lost my northern, my, my accent and just had a very, uh, my, my Lancashire accent and just had a bit of a northern accent. Um, so my earliest memory, Suze Jo wanted to know what my earliest memory is. And she told me hers. You can go back to the comments and read all of these. I remember when I was very, very little, I don't know how old, my brothers and I were playing in the backyard with they had mirrors and they were glinting these mirrors in the sun and making the 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 um the light go all over the place with these glinting mirrors and i don't know how old i was but i really like this and i wanted to do it so i went into the house and i got a mirror i think it was my mum's little makeup mirror and um i fell on the steps going up the steps and cut my knee really badly and i just remember my mum bandaging it up that's my earliest memory don't know why that one popped into my head. I'm answering questions about the family now. And these are all questions that have come in. And um, I love this one. Can we have more of John, please? <laughs> now, John's my middle kid. And he comes and helps me to pin pins into the map in Pink HQ. You'll have seen some of those videos, maybe. And if you are a patron, then he does the Patreon videos where he pins patrons into the map with a little flag with their name on. And if you buy something from the shop, then he'll pin a pin in. Well, we're very, very behind with those, aren't we, John? <laughs> but um, we will have more of John because he loves doing the map videos. He loves doing them. And um, we were sent a map book of America by Judy. So thank you, Judy. And he finds all the places all over the world and pins pins into the map. So, yes, we will have more of John. And while I'm speaking about my children, somebody wanted to know. Uh, they they, they um, heard me say that Owen lives in Canada. Where does Owen live? Well, he won't mind me saying that Owen and Rita live in Montreal. Now... This is about the channel and why I started the channel in the first place. I suppose it's been going now for nearly two years. And um, I st I, this is why I started the channel. I'm not sure I've ever explained this to anybody before, but I live in the middle of nowhere. You've got that. My uh, Wi-Fi here used to be so incredibly slow, so slow. And uh, so, you know, the dial up speed, you know, it was so slow. And then, amazingly, we had an upgrade and I got fibre broadband, which meant that suddenly I was being able to load videos uh, faster. I was being able to download things which I never could do before. And it occurred to me that if I turn the camera on, I could possibly load a video to YouTube. So I was sitting outside in the pavilion one day, spinning, and I... Um, just started chatting to you all. And that first video, it was done on my iPad, not with a mic. <laughs> and um, 
I just started chatting and a few people watched and I had 10 subscribers and it was, um, I enjoyed doing it. So I thought, I'll do it again. So I started setting myself all sorts of rules, like I should post on the full moon and the new moon. And then I started saying it should only be 10 minutes long. So I set loads of restrictions in place for myself, self-imposed restrictions. And then I thought, hang on a minute, I don't need to do this. No, I'm in charge. <laughs> So then I just started to film and in response to people saying they couldn't hear me or they didn't like this or that about stuff. I think slowly things have got a little bit better. And then I discovered iMovie. And that's when I started discovering that I could edit things and put music in. And I think that my videos have gone now to a little bit more of a production value. I enjoy doing them. And I uh, um, I, I do. I enjoy doing them very much. And how I choose the music, speaking of music, because I have to have royalty free music. Uh, otherwise, um, YouTube penalises me. I did once put on like a, a 10 seconds of the Beatles and I got um, completely slated and I couldn't post the video. So now I choose royalty free music, which comes from either the stuff that YouTube give me. And that's quite interesting, choosing that. Or there's a website called Ben Sounds. Now, when this video's finished and has gone to the channel, I'm going to put loads of links uh, underneath here. And I'll put a link to Ben Sounds. In fact, look, I'll make a little note that I'm going to do that. There, Ben Sounds, because otherwise I'll forget. And then a, someone said to me, why is the channel called The Last Homely House East of the Sea? Now, I actually do have a video all about that. It's quite old now. Um, maybe I'll link to that as well. So I'll put a link to that. Or you could find it in the playlists. I have playlists and um, I have a playlist called Chats. And if you go there, you'll find a video called Why is this channel called The Last Homely House? And just briefly, it is um, a quote from... Tolkien, who I, I love, um, Tolkien, Lord of the Rings, Hobbit, all of that. And uh, it's a quote from Tolkien where he describes uh, Rivendell, which is uh, where the elves live. I know it all gets a little bit sort of um, um, elfish now and so on. And uh, <laughs> he describes, I wonder if I've got it on the back of here. Yeah, I've got it on the back of one of my books. So he describes the last homely house like this. I'll read it out to you just in case nobody's got this. OK. Tolkien says that it is a perfect house, whether you like food or sleep or storytelling or singing or just sitting and thinking best or a pleasant mixture of them all. Merely to be there was a cure for weariness, fear and sadness. And I like that. I like that so much because I, oh, messages coming in from my children. I'm just going to ignore those. And so um, the the name then is to do with, with that. And I, it's not like it's called that on the farm or anything. I call it that. And I, um, yeah, so that's why it's called The Last Homely House. Yeah, I'm getting through these quite slowly. Somebody asked about the videos that I've made and I say in them, I'll do this. And, um, oh, yes, I said, oh, this will be a future video. And people are wondering, where are these future videos? Now, have I got more drawers to tidy out from the big drawer tidy out? Yes, I have. Lots. And so, and I know that people have enjoyed watching me tidy those out and finding all these bits of treasures and things. So I am actually going to tidy out some more drawers. I am. Samira wanted to know if I was ever going to get round to doing that Pajagi curtain thing. Now, all the pieces are there, Samira, and all, all the indigo dyed pieces. And I still have the idea to make curtains for the big spare room upstairs. So when Things have got a little bit busy around here. So when I get the opportunity, I am going to make those Pajagi curtains and I will do a tutorial on what the seams are like, those Pajagi seams. Somebody else asked about the Liberty Pixel pictures. That's one behind me there. 
and that's I, I posted part one and there is a part two. I just haven't made it yet. So I am going to make part two of the pixel pictures. I think I do get round to everything eventually. All these these things that you hear coming in are my kids. Or I'll just turn it on to silent. Are my kids talking to each other? That's OK. And so um, I'll do part two of that. And then I did say that I would post the drive in real time. I've written that one again. I will. I'll post it in real time, but I'll put a big disclaimer at the front about the fact that, you know, there's nothing else on this except me driving on the wrong side of the road. It's the right side of the road for me, by the way. <laughs> OK, then. So um, I'm sorry that if you're asking me questions in the comments, I made a decision at the beginning of this. That I wasn't going to read the comments. And so I, d I don't know if the comments will appear on the video once it's posted. I don't know. So Anna. If anybody is asking me any questions, could you jot them down? <laughs> Anna's watching this for me. Hi, Anna. This next section then is all about crafts, crafts that I do, crafts that I would like to do. And so um, what crafts or courses would I like to do? Now, I got this mission, I think you could call it, to pretty much make everything that I use. And so, you know, if you've watched in the past that I've made baskets and weaving and um, pottery, uh, I make, uh, I spin, I make clothes, I knit this from my own spinning. Uh, I do, I like to do loads of things. I've made my own curtains. I do make my own clothes. Um, oh, hi, I'm only going to do one hi. Hi, Anna. <laughs> just the only hi I'm going to do is Anna. Hi, Anna. I'm not really reading them apart from Anna, but Anna will answer questions, I guess, if people ask them. Is that too big a deal, Anna? Don't do it if it's hard. So um, so people ask me about, uh, oh, did I make my coat, my beautiful patchwork coat? No, I didn't make that. I didn't make my coat. Um, I, it was an impulse buy and I really love it. I love it. Uh, and so, uh, but I do make some of my clothes, terribly simple clothes. I don't make any of the tops that, you know, people say, oh, do, did you make the top, that top you're wearing? No, I, I haven't made those, but I have made some. And I suppose um, I like to follow um, Sonia Phillips uh, patterns. Uh, she did this thing, 100 acts of sewing. And so I will leave a link to her as well. So I'll link that. OK. Um, do I knit? Yes. Will I do quilting tutorials now? I do. If you go into the playlists and go to sewing and quilting, you'll see that I've done a quilting tutorial on flying geese quilts. I've done a tutorial on the trip around the world block another one on the postage stamp block. They're all there. And shortly, very shortly, I'm going to be posting uh, the videos about um, making the um, post, uh, no, the trip around the world quilt that I made for a customer. I'm going to be posting those soon. I think that'll be in three or four parts. So um, the qu quilting tutorials. Susan wants to know how I keep my hands in shape when I'm quilting because I hand quilt all my quilts. I did take that one quilt that went to be machine quilted, but that was an experimental thing. So I hand quilt everything. How I keep my hands in shape is by stopping regularly and doing a different job. <laughs> and so if I'm uh, hand quilting, then I'll get up and I'll, I'll do something else with my hands um, and try not to work too long at something because otherwise you just get such repetitive stress going on in your hands, don't you? And so uh, another crafts one. She, Gwyn asked me what fiddly, what crafts have I done that I don't actually um, won't do again and fiddly things. So I will never do anything that takes a lot of fiddly effort or tiny, tiny pieces. Like, for instance, lace making would drive me completely round the bend. And uh, and I, I did do that weaving. I did a couple of days of weaving and I probably won't do that again. 
Uh, I did it and I enjoyed it and I've got my lovely scarf, but I probably won't do that again. Suzanne, where do I buy fabric? Lots of places. I like to buy them in the real world. I like to be able to feel them and see them, but I sometimes do buy fabric from, uh, um, there's a place in the UK, the Cotton Patch, and I buy from there quite often if I need a particular thing. They've got a huge range and they carry a lot of K-Facet prints, which I, uh, I really love to work with K-Facet. And then Sue wanted to know, will I be doing Christmas projects? Yes, I'm planning loads of things for Christmas already. Uh, those of you who've got the calendar, I'll be making another calendar again, but I was thinking as well about doing uh, some Christmas makes, but I'll probably do them in November so that you've got time to make them in time for Christmas. I'll try and plan that a little bit better. Now, people wanted to know if I've tried other crafts, batik, felting, macrame. I've done all of those, all of them, and... Um, I did macrame back in the 70s when we were all making everything out of macrame, weren't we? Everyone's got a macrame plant hanger from the 70s. Well, I enjoyed doing it then and I will do it again um, if I've got the need to do so. Felting is something that I used to teach. So I've got loads of felting equipment, needle felting stuff and um, all the stuff that you need for wet felting. It's just that I haven't really done any felting for ages. And batik, I think, would fall into the category of tried it once, don't want to do it again. <laughs> and so um, <laughs> my favourite craft for winter, I guess knitting in front of the telly uh, with a cat on your knee and a good film is, uh, is the way to go. Now, this is kind of interesting because of this this is Rita who you don't often see so this is cat Rita okay uh, oh crochet oh looking at the comments uh, I can crochet but I don't um, I can't read crochet patterns I think that's what the problem is as Cat Rita's just put in an appearance, I just want to explain to you why she's called Cat Rita. Here she is. Isn't she beautiful? She's got this beautiful marking on her head here and she's got this gorgeous half and half face. Now, she has her sister Prudence, who's around here somewhere as well. And I got these two as kittens when they were eight weeks old. And they're seven years old now. And I called them Rita and Prudence after Beatles um, songs. Uh, lovely Rita and Dear Prudence. And um, then Owen got together with his lovely girlfriend, Rita. And I thought, oh, that's going to be a little bit confusing. And so uh, <laughs> I asked Rita when I met her, I said, would you like me to change the cat's name? I said, I wouldn't mind. I could call her something else. But Rita was quite pleased to have a cat called Rita. So they're now called Cat Rita and Girl Rita. A little bit confusing. Just a little bit confusing. So back to the crafts page now, because I've got a cat page as well. Loads of things about, uh, about cats. Somebody's asking what my first quilt was. And do you know something? I might do a little video about that. I think I mentioned it once before. I could go down a big rabbit hole here and telling you all about the um, my inspiration for my first quilt. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll make a sick man account now. I'll say I'll make a video about my first quilt and I'll tell you all about it then. That's what I'm going to do, because I could go down a big rabbit hole telling you about that and we'd all get lost off and I'd lose everybody. Karen, no, I'm not on Ravelry. But what I'm currently knitting, I'm going to leave that to one side because I'll tell you what I'm currently knitting in a minute. OK, then. So this is some questions now about YouTube. Now, for those of you who are just arriving, I'm answering questions that were posed on the video where I announced I would do this live stream a few days ago. And I said that rather than me try to read stuff going past with my poor eyesight, I would answer questions that they posed me on that post. So that's what I'm doing. So if people think this is a bit weird, then that I should be reading the, the, um, the comments that are coming in. That's why I decided to do that. So I'm sorry if you, if you think it's a bit of a weird live stream. Now, 
Someone's asked me, which other YouTube channels do I watch? I don't think it will come as any surprise at all to know that my first and favourite YouTube channel is Hercules Candy. <laughs> and so I started watching Hercules Candy. Somebody asked me why I started watching them. And it was because I really like making things, as you know, and I wanted to know how to make um, caramel um, for someone's birthday, maybe two years ago now. Um, I made caramel and covered it with chocolate and wrapped it all up. And it was for a birthday present for my little friend, Nancy. And um, I learned what I needed to know from Hercules Candy. And so um, I just love Hercules. Now, if you, I'll leave a link in the description below. But if you've been following me for any length of time, you'll know that I love Hercules. Come on. Come and say hi. And Terry and Steve and Craig and Max and now all and um, Karen and now all the new people, Cara and um, uh, more people than I can remember the names of now. And so um, I just love everything about Hercules. I love how friendly they are, how authentic they are. I do. I really, really do enjoy them. So Hercules Candy, I'm going to be leaving links to all of the um, YouTubes that I'm going to mention now in the description box below. So Royalty Soap is another one that I watch and this is Katie who makes soap in Texas and the reason why I like watching her is she is so energetic and so friendly and her videos are so bouncy and fabulous. They're just brilliant and the soap's really really nice too. And I was very, very fortunate to be sent a bar of the soap by a lovely friend, a uh, uh, um, YouTube friend. So Royalty Soaps. Now, there's a few more that uh, are less well known. I watch a, a channel called Pasta Grannies, which has got, I can hear the theme tune in my head as I say it. It's the same tune every time. And Pasta Grannies are just these really, really old people in Italy. I mean, like in their 90s, some of them making pasta. I'll leave a link to it below. It's absolutely brilliant. I love it. <laughs> Pasta Grannies. Now, there's another channel that I love to watch called, I'm, don't worry, I'm going to link all of these. You can jot them down if you like, but I'm going to link them all. I love to watch Life Uncontained, which is uh, a young couple who bought two shipping containers and they're in Texas and they're turning them into a home and they make the most lovely, lovely videos ab about that. It's absolutely brilliant. There's another channel that I watch and it's called Ambient Worlds. Uh, don't worry, I'm leaving all the links later. Ambient Worlds is uh, a guy who takes soundtracks from all the films that I love and turns them into like three hour long. Um, they're just beautiful. So you can listen to three for three hours of Lord of the Rings music or Harry Potter, or all the stuff that I love. And they're all there. I love them. So that's a good one that I really like. There's a guy in Ireland called Mossy Bottom. Uh, his dog's called Moss and he's bought a little cottage in Ireland and he's doing it up and he's living a very simplistic life on the west coast of Ireland. And he doesn't post very many um, uh, videos, but um, Mossy Bottom is a lovely, lovely, lovely um, thing to watch. Robin, RS Island Crafts, I really enjoy watching her. Uh, you know, some of the um, the scrap tutorial that I made the red and white quilt from, I got all of the um, information about making um, scrap piecing from uh, Robin at RS Island Crafts. And she's having a tricky time at the moment. And so she could do with a bit of love from everybody at the moment. Her husband's not well and she she's just having a, a difficult time. But then there are some channels that I've just started watching recently and I want to talk about Martin at Paddington Farm. And I think Martin might be watching. And if you are, don't fall off your seat, Martin. Now, he has an allotment. He's just a young guy. He has an allotment in the UK and he also hatches quail eggs out in his sitting room. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> and um, he. Um, so I've been watching him and one day I was at Pottery and um, Karen, who's a lovely person at Pottery, said, 
my nephew was watching your YouTube channel the other day and I said, oh, that's interesting. Who is he? And it's her nephew. And quite by absolute chance, her nephew started a YouTube channel that I've been watching. So he's called Paddington Farm. I'll leave a link to him in the description below. Then there's another young friend of mine who is a performer and she um, has a channel called. Now, you're going to have to you're going to yeah, listen carefully because I'll write the description below, but it's called Lulla Boogaloo just exactly how you would imagine you would write that. Now, she is also in the UK. She lives up, up, up here in the Northeast and she's a performer and she works with young children. And she mm, writes beautiful little songs that little, little children would like. And she goes out into the woods and records these little songs. And she's got a sweet dog called Charlie and her channel is just a little tiny challenge. She's not been going for long, but I'll leave her link below as well. And if you've got children or um, if you've got grandchildren or visiting kids and you want a lovely, lovely, enthusiastic woman from the UK to sing them some little songs, then Claire's your person. Lulla Boogaloo, her name is. And so I'd watch loads of other YouTube channels, but those are the ones that spring to mind. I watch a lot of pottery videos. I watch other soap making videos. I watch Clyde at Vibrant Soaps. I think he's brilliant. I really like his soaps. They're very, very good. And so that is the list that I have here. What other things do I watch on YouTube? Those are the ones really. Those are the, my go-tos. And so, um, yeah. Okay. So that's all about the YouTube channel, why I started it, because I simply could. And then it grew in a way that I could never have dreamed possible. I'm absolutely astounded to find that there's so many people who are enjoying what I'm doing here. OK, next question. Are we doing all right rattling around these questions here? The next question is, what camera do I use? Here it is. I use a Panasonic HCW 580. I will leave a dis, uh, the descript the link to this in the description below. Now I used to film everything on my iPad, like I'm talking to you now. Everything, and it was at the beginning of the year, and I used to get all sorts of comments from people saying we can't hear you, Kate, and the quality is not very good. Well, I started my Patreon channel at Christmas, and um, the first goal on my Patreon channel. Uh, was, uh, I am going to say another, uh, moderators don't delete Rita Lobo, okay? Moderators keep Rita Lobo in because I am related to Rita. You have to leave her in. She's girl Rita, not cat Rita. So yeah, so let, let Rita comment. This then was my first goal on my Patreon channel was to get a camera. And uh, this is it. It's absolutely brilliant. And I'll tell you how I got it. Oh, there's another channel I forgot to tell you about. Uh, Vivi, who's uh, what Vivi, uh, Vivi gard uh, gardening channel. She makes channels all about gardening. She's amazing. And so um, I wrote to her an email and I said, what, um, what camera do you use? Because I was getting fed up of just using my iPad. And she gave me the link to this camera. I bought it straight away and I've never, ever looked back. This is um, a, a fantastic camera. It's absolutely brilliant. I, what I like about it is it this opens out like this and I'm going to be filming you now. In fact, I will. That will be a laugh, won't it? I'll film you guys so I can do that and film you. But look, when I turn that round, look, you can see yourselves. <laughs> this isn't working, is it? Uh, this is a very, very good camera and it's what I do everything on now. Also, I suppose at the same time as getting the camera, I started editing on my computer instead of on my iPad. And I think that's um, I think that's made things a bit better. So the camera is great. I'll leave a, a, a link uh, down below. Are we doing all right here? I've been talking to you for 40 minutes. <laughs> And I'm not looking at a single comment except for the fact that I just saw Rita pop up there. Uh, OK, then this next section is all about um, books and films. And people uh, want to know who my favourite author is and what my favourite books are 
and uh, movies and that kind of thing. Okay, so um, <laughs> so a few, many years ago, maybe 20 years ago, I read a book called Behind the Scenes at the Museum by Kate Atkinson. And uh, I'd never heard of it before. It was her first novel. I read it. I was blown away. It was absolutely brilliant. It's the sort of book you can only read once because when you find out at the end what it is, which I obviously won't tell you, you can't read it again because you would read it knowing that. Do you see what I mean? So once you go, oh, that's why, then, you know, you can only read the book once. So she's amazing. I then discovered that she'd uh, later she'd written a whole series uh, about um, a detective called um, Jackson Brody. I really like those as well. So I, I read those. There's another book that I loved from, um, uh, I'll talk about that in a minute, uh, from when I used to work, which was by Anita Diamond, and it's called The Red Tent. Really, really like that. Really like that. Um, but there is a book I'm going to show you now, which I guess, not to be too um, dramatic, but this book pretty much changed my life. Eckhart Tolle, A New Earth. It probably is the best book I've ever read. And I picked it up not really knowing what it was going to be about. And it's not a novel, of course. It's uh, it's amazing. If you ever only ever read one book, then read Eckhart Tolle's Be um, uh, A New Earth. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> he also wrote The Power of Now, but A New Earth is much, much better. But while we're talking about reading, um, I read the at Advent. I did a daily reading about Emil, and um, the author of Behind the Scenes at the Museum is Kate Atkinson. I'll leave a message in the um, thing below. Are you getting on all right, moderators? What's the matter, Tricia? Uh, 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 with uh, are you doing okay? I'm doing what I said I wouldn't do. I'm not going to read the comments. Okay, the so reading then. I read um, Emil at, uh, daily at Advent. I really enjoyed doing it. I love reading. And, uh, but then when I got to the end of that, um, I was having a conversation with Girl Rita. And actually, I was probably in contravention of the copyright laws. And so, um, and that's, that's a thing. I can't contravene copyright. So I've got to think very, very carefully about only reading royalty free books. So loads of people have suggested that I uh, I should read this or this or this. Someone today said, um, would I read The Hobbit? And I can't because it's in copyright. And so, um, yeah, what can I do now over on my Patreon channel, which I haven't even mentioned yet, but I've got a question about Patreon later. I do read. I read and I kind of keep my fingers crossed. I read Kensky's Kingdom, which is by Michael Morpurgu. Actually, anything by him would be great to read. He's fantastic for kids and grown-ups. Uh, oh, I've just remembered my favourite book of all time. I'll get back to that in a second. But what I started doing on Patreon was reading my own books. <laughs> These are the books that I've written that are available in the shop. And... I can read these because I give myself permission to read them. But it's a problem because I do. I want to do another Advent reading. I really do. I really do. But I don't know how to get round that um, unless I write it myself. I don't know how to get round that um, problem of it being uh, uh, them being in copyright and me being in contravention of the copyright. It's a little bit like the um, it's a little bit like the um, music. I can't read. Uh, I can't play um, royalty free music, uh, music unless it's royalty free. OK, so I really want to read more books. I do. But I'm going to have to think that one through very, very carefully. And so that's reading for Advent. And then uh, Rini in France wants to know, am I going to write more of these little books um, here? Um, and I already have. <laughs> I've got some more of these. 
Um, and so I'm going to, um, I had these ones printed, but I might read um, the ones, I, I, yeah, over on Patreon, I did read one that I haven't had printed yet, which was about the, the hen, Hilda. Do you remember my rescue hens? I read that. So I'm going to um, think that one through about the reading. I am going to write more books. I do um, love writing. I love writing. I've written for years and years now, all sorts of things, all sorts of things. And so this next thing is, will I write a cookbook? Now, cooking. OK, cooking. You've watched me on my cooking videos. And so I, um, <laughs> I, I'm a bit of a, a wing it sort of cook. If I haven't got something, I'll stick something else in. Or if I like something, I'll put a bit more in. I'm not really a recipe follower. OK, and so I made it was my son John's birthday uh, two days ago and I made his birthday cake and I've just been editing the video about his birthday cake and it, it's a re proper recipe and I was reading the recipe and I thought oh, I haven't got any of that well I'll put this in instead oh oh I don't like that so I won't I'll leave it out so <laughs> I will do some recipes but um, they'll probably be just guidelines instead of recipes now, I want to talk to you about the nut roast that I did the other day on the channel. I cooked a nut roast. So many people said, I've never had nut roast before. What is nut roast? I was amazed. I thought nut roast was like the most common thing for vegetarians to eat. So I forgot to tell you that you cook it for 180, on 180 degrees centigrade for 30 minutes. And my flan recipe, which uh, John has complimented very highly in the past, and all my children really like my flan recipe. So I will be doing a flan soon and I'll leave a recipe for that. So Susie wants to know why I wear an apron. I think that's quite an interesting question. When I put an apron on, I just feel purposeful. I feel like I'm about to do something purposeful. And if I haven't got an apron on, I can't cook. So she says she has um, a memory of older relatives wearing aprons and now they're not around. She can't remember why they did. And so um, I wear one so I don't get drunk all over me <laughs> when I'm cooking. And yes, they do work. OK, are we doing all right? And we've been going for a long time and I've still got a lot of questions left. I'll keep going. Travel. This next bit's all about travel. If I could live in any country for a month, where would that be? Now, people who know me a little will be able to answer that one straight away. If I could live anywhere for a month, where would it be? Where would it be? New Zealand. Six years ago, I went to New Zealand for two months. It was the best two months of my life. Yeah, New Zealand. <laughs> and I absolutely loved it. And I'll tell you why. Well, apart from many reasons, but it was the middle of winter here. And it's the middle of summer there. And so it's summer. They drive on the left and they speak English. What's not to like? So I think I could live in New Zealand, apart from the fact that my family all live here. I absolutely adore New Zealand. And so you'll notice in the comments, if anyone's from New Zealand, they always get preferential treatment. And yes, I did make my jumper, Teresa. Sorry, I'm not reading the comments. So where in the U US would I like to visit? I have been to America. A couple of times I went to Wisconsin when I was in my 20s for a month and I've been to New York a couple of times, which I loved. Where in the US would I visit? East Syracuse, obviously, <laughs> because I would go to Hercules Candy and I would just volunteer to work with them for the day and that would be good. But then I thought about this because somebody asked me to name three places that I would like to um, 
visit in the US. And so Hercules is number one on the list. But then after that, it would be somewhere like um, the Rockies, somewhere very, very high up and remote, as long as there were no bears. <laughs> uh, yeah. Where in the world would I like to visit? And so um, I've been to many places. I've been, uh, I have actually these last uh, eight, nine years, I've been to Sweden and India and um, Lisbon and uh, all of these places on my own. And I um, have, have had a really lovely time. But what's filtered to the top of the list now? Finland. I don't know why, but Finland is, I don't know, it's the, it's the forests, it's the um, lakes, it's the culture. I think everything about Finland, I would absolutely love to visit Finland. And someone asked, would I visit Australia? Yeah, on my way to New Zealand. <laughs> OK, Busy Bee, this one's for you. Have I ever owned a dog? I've owned three dogs in my life. I had a red setter called Sally many, many, many years ago. I had a, a collie, the sheepdog, called um, Ruby, who was an absolutely beautiful dog. And I had another collie called Poppy, one at a time. And then Poppy features in this book. This book is all about Norma. It's called Kate's Cat Norma. And there's a, f a fair few people who've read this now. If you read this, you'd know why I'm not going to get a dog while Norma's still alive. So if anybody follows me over on Instagram, on Instagram used to be Kate Jackson Textiles, but now it's called Kate at the Last Homely House. It's the same feed. And last night on my stories, I, I did loads of stories about Rocky. Now, Rocky is the feral cat who comes to visit my windowsill every night. And um, he still comes. He's looking fine. He's doing OK. <laughs> and somebody said, who do you think is the dad of Sadie's kittens? Well, I know who it is. It's Rocky. Somebody asked why the cats are named as they are. The cats then are Beatles songs, Rita, Prudence and Norm and Sadie, Sexy Sadie, Lovely Rita, Dear Prudence. But Norma, the reason why Norma is named Norma is all explained in this little book here. She wasn't always called Norma. Eileen, we're going to talk a little bit about poultry. If you want to know more about Eileen, it's all in this uh, this book here. And this is called Kate's Goose Eileen. Now, I made a video about Eileen going to live with friends of mine who have a farm with geese. And people think that she was still living there. Well, she came back the very next day. So what I'll do, I'll put the link in the description about the video that I made about how why Eileen only lasted at my friend's house for one day. Somebody asked me about the poultry. Do I have foxes or raccoons? No raccoons. Never seen a raccoon, ever. Foxes, though, are very common in the UK, but I have never seen a fox here in 33 years. And the, 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 the short reason for that is that where I live here, uh, is uh, uh, the estate. I live on an estate. Oh, it's going to get complicated this. I'm not going to ex describe all of that because we're already at 54 minutes. But the estate next to mine uh, has gamekeepers who manage um, the um, who manage the area so that people can go and shoot birds. So they don't want um, foxes killing their pheasants and grouse and so on. And so um, they kill all the foxes. That's, I'm afraid that's the top and the bottom of that one. We're getting near the end of these now. Margaret, the bush by the back door is called a spirea. And yes, it is beautiful, isn't it? 
Oh, God, are we doing OK? I'm rattling through these. You guys carry on chatting to each other in the comments because it's lovely. Am I vegetarian? Kind of. Uh, yes, I've been vegetarian on and off for most of my life. There have been times when I've eaten meat because bringing up three kids who re weren't, you know, somewhere packet checking vegetarians, you'll know who you are if you're watching, and somewhere didn't think it was a meal unless there was um, meat on the plate. So I was catering for everybody. So I cooked meat. Sometimes I mostly cooked vegetables for people. And so my kids, some of them are vegetarian, some of them aren't. It's like a mixture. People eat what they want, really, don't they? Sometimes I'm vegan. Sometimes I have ice cream and so I'm not. And which vegetables do I not like? Badly cooked sprouts. So at Christmas, if you put the sprouts on and you leave them on for half an hour. OK, then I'm going to do some miscellaneous now because we're coming to the towards the end. We still have quite a few left. Doreen, my favourite colour is green or pink or green and pink. My favourite song is probably anything that the Beatles recorded, almost anything. And um, I think Blackbird would be one of my favourite Beatles songs. I absolutely love that song. But there are quite a lot of others as well. What's my favourite time of year? The one I'm in. <laughs> so the, at the moment we're in midsummer and the garden is just full of weeds, absolutely full of weeds. But I love it because they're absolutely beautiful. <laughs> What's my favourite book? We've talked about that. But because I didn't mention my absolute favourite book, I'm going to answer that one again. So my favourite book probably at the moment would be Philip Pullman's um, Dark Materials trilogy. Uh, and if you if you don't know that, it's actually written for children or young adults. And it's uh, three books, Northern Lights, uh, The Subtle Knife and The Amber Spyglass. And um, he is such a such an accomplished writer. He really is. And I absolutely love the books. And now my son, who lives in Canada, he is he works in film and he is working on an adaptation for um, film for um, the BBC are making an, ad an adaptation of um, Philip Pullman's Dark Materials and I couldn't be more happy. I think I was more excited when he got that job than he was. So I'm excited about that. I can't wait to see that on the screen. It's The trailer's out already. It looks fantastic. I shall leave a link to the trailer. Now, what's my favourite food? I think I could safely say that my favourite food is lots and lots of nibbly bits and pieces, Mediterranean things like hummus and and flatbreads and bits of salad and olives. I absolutely love that kind of food. Fantastic. And Christy wants to know who my favourite chef is. Jamie Oliver. That's all I need to say about that. And I haven't got a favourite gardener. Ella, I like this Ella very much. She says, don't change the channel. I won't. I'll try really hard not to. Dale, whatever the weather may be, thank you. Linda, do I have an afternoon nap? Yes, I do sometimes. Not often, maybe once every f couple of weeks. And my lovely daughter-in-law, Anna, has taught me this importance and significance of afternoon naps. And do my cats sleep with me? No, they don't, because I really, really don't like being woken up by a cat uh, climbing about all over the bed. So the cats are excluded from the bedroom. Melanie wants to know why cake pans are round. I'll just leave all that with you. I'm onto the miscellaneous section now. Lisa's question's lovely. Did I want to sell my children when they were teenagers? I'll leave you to decide on that one as well. <laughs> now, on the Patreon channel, which I've barely mentioned, uh, and I'm going to talk about it in a minute, I read a book by Michael Morpurgu called Kensky's Kingdom. 
and I read it in several episodes. It was one of the first things I did on Patreon. And um, so one of the questions I've had here is, if I was stranded on Kensky's Island, what three things would I take with me? Norma, obviously. A comfortable pillow so that I would sleep well at night because, you know, when you go and stay in a hotel or someone else's house and the pillow's hard or soft or the wrong sort of pillow. Not great. And the other one, and I was trying to think of this one earlier, a big bag of cashew nuts. Why not? <laughs> and that my favourite Hercules product would be basically anything with nuts in because I really, really like nuts. So they're nut clusters or something nutty. Yeah, absolutely. That would be that. And so you know who you are. Now, Wanda remembered way back, I was given by my kids um, a trip to the Liverpool um, Beatles tour. And I couldn't go because we had the worst snow ever and I had to cancel it. Did I ever do the Beatles tour? No, I didn't. That's still outstanding. That's still something I have to do. But I want to say to you, did anybody see, and I'll leave a link to this because you leave a lot of links. Did anybody see the link, the uh, video that James Corden made when he took Paul McCartney back to Liverpool? I'll leave a link about that one. Because do you know something? It's one of the best bits of, of YouTube I've ever seen. I absolutely loved it. I'm a massive fan of Paul McCartney. Massive. Linda thinks that I'm tall. I think that's because I sit down a lot. And um, I'm not. I'm five foot four. I used to be five foot six. Well, I'm five foot four. And the weather. What's the weather like here? It's pretty moderate, really, although the weather's going a little bit haywire at the minute and when I look at the weather I look at it in um, centigrade so 20 degrees centigrade which you know it's been the last few days is 68 degrees Fahrenheit and in the winter we can go down to about naught degrees centigrade which is 32 degrees Fahrenheit it's pretty moderate the weather here although because I live here on the side of this hill it's very 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 windy indeed in just quick fire questions now, I'm 63, I'm an Aquarian. Um, does my brain fog bother me sometimes? <laughs> now, Gwen, I think you get uh, full marks for this question. Could I give any beauty tips? For goodness sake. <laughs> I think you must have come from a different channel. <laughs> no, <laughs> but thank you very, very, very much indeed. <laughs> I'm nearly at the end, guys. This is a question now from Jan. And I seem to be happy and at peace. And is that really what I'm like? And so I'm 63, I've just said. And, you know, like all of you, I've been through life's challenges, you know, losing people and, you know, stuff that happens to everybody. And sometimes you can feel like everything's stacked against you and um, you can wake up in the morning and feel like there's absolutely nothing that you're interested in doing. But do you know something? The bigger picture is that none of that really matters at all. And there's always some good to be found in something. And I'm going to end on this one. Somebody said to me here, how do I deal with life's disappointments? And they, it's just initials here. And I think I know who you are. How do you deal with life's disappointments? So I'm not going to get all philosophical with you here. But I think that if you're disappointed in something, it's because you have an expectation that it'll be, it'll be different from how it is. And so you can only be disappointed if you have an expectation that things will be other than they are. So if you don't expect much, everything that happens is, uh, is pretty, pretty great, isn't it? So lower your expectations, I think. But there is one more thing that I wanted to say. I put it at the top here because I haven't actually addressed this one. Now, over on the Patreon channel, and I barely mentioned Patreon, but I started Patreon at Christmas and all sorts of people have been joining Patreon on all the different tiers. 
it's the first of the month tomorrow and I'm busy making all the uh, postcards to send out to the people on that tier and all the, the rewards are all going to be done in the next few days. But over on Patreon, I do videos about different things for them that are just for patrons. And one of the things that I've been doing lately is all about the fact that in October, I'm going to be a grandma because my daughter is ha and uh, Martha and Adam are having a baby in October. So I'm very, very excited about it. So when somebody asks me, what am I knitting, Karen? I'm knitting things for the baby. <laughs> and I'm very excited about being a grandma. <laughs> and so what I might do, you've been amazing. I've been kind of had a little eye on the on the um, on the comments here. I haven't wanted to read them out because I haven't wanted to do that kind of video. But if people want to know more about me, there's lots of different ways of doing that. You can become a patron and there's over 100 exclusive videos on Patreon. You can look at the books that I've made here and there's quite a lot about my life here. I mean, this book, uh, there's a lot about uh, my previous life in this one. Um, uh, the cats, there's some lighthearted ones, the bees. This one, this is about a job that I did a few years ago that was um, pretty interesting. And... This one is all about my awesome cat. So I am going to be a grandma. I couldn't be more excited. I really couldn't. Thank you, all of you, for all the congratulations about that. They're all going to Martha all the, and Adam. All the congratulations. She's very, very well. Martha works very hard and uh, she's still working and will be for a while and uh, she works hard and she um, is the most wonderful energetic lively person and she's going to be a great mum and Adam's going to be a great dad and I'm going to have a go at being a grandma so I shall be asking for tips grandma tips we might have to do a video about that I hope I've answered all the questions that I wanted to answer there. We've been 67 minutes we've been here. If you're still with me, then absolutely thank you so very, very much, so much. Whatever time it is for you all over the world, I massively apologise to the people in Australia and New Zealand for, for whom it's either very, very early morning or the middle of the night. <laughs> and Tricia, yes, I will do another live. Ah, oh, Sandra, what was your question? Type it in, Sandra, because you've moderated so beautifully that I'd really like to answer it for you. I can't remember what, what your question was. I wrote them all down this morning, and so I can't remember. I'd like to thank the moderators very, very, very much indeed, because sometimes those moderators can't actually concentrate on what's going on because they're too busy trying to moderate the chat. I hope it hasn't been too complicated and there haven't been, you know, anybody misbehaving themselves. Um, but um, uh, unless Sandra's question c comes in quick, uh, okay. Yes, congratulations to Martha and Adam. It's great. I've never done a live stream before. I think people are more expecting me to look at questions from the comments that are coming in and answer them. It didn't feel to me like I wanted to do that uh, because I've, I don't enjoy live streams like that. Uh, no, I haven't. Karina, I haven't got to have a dog. And if you read this book, you would know why. There's a very good reason why. I may have a dog one day, but not while Norma's still alive. And Norma's 18. Um, and so, um, Sandra, type it again. She missed it. Ah, no. Was What's on my wish list to learn or do still? There is a question and answer to that one. I really would like to learn how to make glass, uh, you know, like blow glass or make fuse glass or do something to do with glass. Yes, Sandra, what did I what do I still want to learn to do? There's loads of things I'd like to learn to do, but glass is quite interesting. Those of you who've seen my window, the woman who made my window is a very, very, very good friend of mine. 
and um, I'd really like to learn more about glass. And so um, I don't know what happens now with this um, that I've done. It'll, if it's a recording, it'll go to, we're on 70 minutes now, guys. It's too much. It's too long. I'm definitely going to stop. But if this goes over onto the channel now, I don't think I get to see your comments. I don't think so. And so um, thank you all for being here. Thank you for commenting. Oh, I get told off by my kids for not doing this all the time. Give me a thumbs up. Press the subscribe button. I wonder if we're over 10,000 subscribers now. We might be. I can't actually see. <laughs> so hit the subscribe button. Press the bell for notifications. Leave a comment <laughs> in the comments below. Like, share, all the things. <laughs> Pop over to the shop, see what's going on there. <laughs> Pop over to Patreon, see what's happening there. And I am going now. I'm so very, very grateful to you all. I really am. And so I'm going to say a properly good goodbye. <laughs> We're not onto 10,000 subbies. We're almost there. I'm not bothered about the numbers. It's all fine. So thank you for watching. Thank you for watching all the way through if you have. You're all wonderful. And I'm going to say goodbye now properly. Three, two, one. Goodbye.